Hey, my name is Kendrick, and I teach the skills you need to get a job in cybersecurity. So today, I'm going to teach you a cool thing. We're going to do a little bit of PowerShell. This will be good. You can put it on your resume really quick to learn. The first thing you want to do is I've got a virtual machine running the Oracle VirtualBox. We're going to go to the magnifying glass, and this is Windows 11. It'll be a little bit different for you if you're running Windows 10. And I'm just going to type PowerShell, which is already there, but I'm just doing this because I want you to walk through this with me, okay? All right, so then once PowerShell comes up, you can either click here to run it as administrator or you can right click on it and choose run as administrator. I typically right click and do it. But once again, this is purely a preference thing and it's going to launch PowerShell as administrator, which means that we're going to have like super user privileges. Now, what we want to do is, all right, I want you to see this because we need to make our screen um, or our letters just a little bit bigger so you can see it. So what I did is I went to the PowerShell logo properties font and I'm going to bump that up a little bit. I don't know if we need 72. Let's try 36. Okay. All right. You can see like this is really good. I'm going to move this down just a little bit below my camera so you can see this. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to actually use PowerShell to download a file from the internet. So this is part five of the series. The reason you want to do this is because a lot of times if you're doing remediation, you use PowerShell to connect remotely to something. Okay. And so for us today, I'm going to show you a simple way without doing any web browser or anything like that, how to download Firefox. But first we need to get the URL for Firefox. So I'm going to show you. And once I get the URL, we'll be able to do a lot of cool things. And I know some of you in cybersecurity are saying, well, you could have like done the whole thing not using the browser. Well, this is a beginner tutorial. Okay. So yes, you can do the entire process without ever going to a website in your browser, but we're not there yet. Okay. So the first thing, Firefox, Like right, Firefox, let's search for it. And I, I know you're saying, oh my gosh, he's using edge. Once again, this is on my virtual machine. I'm just using kind of what's natively here. I'm going to click on the link there to the first link. Once again, I always encourage you don't click on ads. Um, as a cybersecurity professional, you need to be really picky about what you click on because the last thing you want to do is be surprised when you click on something and you get malware on your machine and have to explain it to your peers why you got yourself infected by clicking a trusted link. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and wait here and I want to pause the video just to let this load. All right. And so it literally loaded just a second after that. All right. So I've got my link here. So that's the download Firefox. And I also got a link up here, but what I want is really a direct link. So I'm going to choose right here at the bottom, two links down. It says download options and other languages. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to get the link directly to the Firefox file. And so for this one, we have multiple versions of Firefox, but I'm just going to choose the first one. 64 bit is what, what most computers are running. And when I hover over the download button, see this link here, it's going to show you once again, hover and you'll see it in your browser and I'm going to copy the link. Okay. Let's just paste the link in my browser just to test it. Okay. That's a lot more than it showed there. But when I click on it and I press enter, what does it do? I'm looking to see if it's going to download the file. The reason I'm showing this is because I want you to see the entire process. Okay. So that is the correct link. That's very good. I'm going to document this. I've got a little pad off of my other screen. And so now that we know the link of the item that we want to download, I'm going to go through the process of showing you how to actually do it. So we're going to minimize this. Go to PowerShell. See, we're in a system 32 folder. We don't want to go there. So let's go to CD uh, space and backslash. And what this is going to do is this is going to take us like all the way to the bottom of the C drive, the very beginning, the main area on your C drive. I'm going to type of LS because we're in PowerShell. We can do that for list directory. And that's basically you I'm kind of using a Linux command in PowerShell, but you can also do a DR and they both do the same thing. So I want to go to to users. It's not case sensitive. And once again, you S E R, you can press the tab key and it'll actually like fill out and complete the rest of it. So we do a LS again or a DR. Oh, 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 put a semicolon. Okay. So D I R. And yes, I'm going to show my mistakes here. Very important that I do that. So let's go to user. All right. We're in user. Wait, let's so user user. Okay. looks like we got another user folder. So let's go there. All right, good. So we're going to go to downloads and see if I have some files there. So we do have some download files there. That's cool. 
And so what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of the Firefox setup. So I'm going to do RM, uh, press enter, see if that, okay, that actually works. I'm going to control C. I don't want to do a PowerShell command. I want to do DEL Firefox IEXE. And I just hit fire FIR and I type tab and it went there and it filled it out. I'm going to type LS again. So there is no Firefox file there. Now, this is the part you've been waiting for. How do I download the same file? How do I replicate what I did just a few seconds ago? Well, without using the web browser. Why would you want to do this? Let me explain that as I get ready to do this. You want to do this because PowerShell, in a lot of cases, you will be using it to remotely run commands on computers. And you may need to download a file on that computer and run an installer, or you may want to uninstall a file. You may need to download a file and to run it in a way that does an uninstall. Yes, that's the thing. Sometimes you actually need the executable to uninstall the file. Either way, I'm teaching you how to do this remotely, and this is part five of the series. And then in part six, I'm gonna put it all together. So if you haven't gone through the previous parts, please do so now. And if you tuned out already, I'm sorry, because one of the things about cybersecurity is you really need to develop a skill that allows you to linearly sit here and, and take the pain to learn because this is free knowledge, okay? So if the people who tune out who are looking for quick entertainment, I'm sorry, but if you're still here on a video, you're likely the person that I'm doing these videos for. So thank you for supporting the channel. Leave me a comment if you actually heard this. I want to know that you heard this part of the video. I want to like actually interact with you and talk to you. Okay, I gotta get better at that, but I'm gonna work on it. Get down microphone. See, they missed this blooper moment, okay? So let's get started. We, in order to do this, and we're six minutes in the video, just getting ready to do this. This is not good probably, but anyway, we're gonna type invoke. dash web or some people will say tack if you hear me say tack i'm talking about the minus sign or the dash sign okay so invoke tack but i want you to get in the process or get in the kind of the habit of saying tack instead of dash okay it's what's accepted in the field and if you say dash people will kind of like no you're kind of like not really part of the field um most people are, are pretty decent they won't say anything but yeah use the sign tack okay so invoke tack web and see how I completed that for me, web request, minus URI, and URI is the same as the URL, okay? That's the link to the website. And you remember I copied that over before? I showed you how to get that because that's part of this step six. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste that in, okay? So that's the actual link to download Mozilla Firefox. And then at the end of this, I want to, oh, and I made a mistake here. I need to put this in double quotes, okay? So. I think it'll run without it. Well, let's just in case. Okay, so double quotes there, space, and then you want to type a tag out file. This is where the, the file name that you want to output. So you can rename it to anything else. Just because you, and this is what's cool about it. Like when you download stuff from the web in your browser, you have an option to, you can kind of change the name to whatever you want it to be once it's right before it downloads, right? But you can do the same thing here. So out file equals, and we're gonna just say firefox.exe, okay? And then space, and we're gonna do pass, pass through. The reason we do the pass through command is that it gives us some feedback. If you run these commands a lot of times, you may not see anything. So commands that support the pass through option, I use the pass through because it'll give us some output that and let us know that the command is running uh, and helps us to understand if it was successful or not, okay? So minus or tag pass through, and then we're gonna do a, a resume. I actually uh, don't need to do the resume. I just want you to know about it because if my understanding is correct, this is gonna allow you if the file messes up, it'll resume. You know what? Let's find out. If not, I'll take this out and we'll get a gem here, but I'll, I like to try things. So here's a good example. Uh, this matches the syntax I have documented. So let's press the command. Let's see what happens. Mm. Cannot be found the match resume. Okay, so that's a good idea. I wanted to try that, but obviously it doesn't work. It is part of this argument, and I'll do some research and give you a tutorial maybe how to use that command, but we can use the, pa the tag pass through. Look at there. You can see it's showing that it's downloading right now. And this is pretty cool, right? So you're actually downloading the file from the internet, which means that once I teach you in this tutorial how to actually browse the internet, how to grab things and find out what's on the website and stuff like that, 
this can be pretty handy. But once again, we're going to stay in a bit of beginner zone. And at, at this point in this series, there may be one more PowerShell before I start showing you how to remediate vulnerabilities. And so this, I want you to know this because this is a critical step in vulnerability remediation, specifically being able to connect to machines remotely. So this shouldn't take long, but I'm going to pause the video here and I'll be right back once it finishes. Okay, so we just finished. Oh, well, we're almost finished. I thought it did. We did got a few, a little bit of output here. So a 200 web request, that means it was successful. That's what you're seeing when you get a 200. That's what we want to see. And uh, this is giving some of us additional information. I'm not sure what the rest of it is. There's, I guess that's the HTTP headers for, this, for the uh, site and the download. But we'll dig into that stuff in the future if necessary. But once again, I want to stay on track here. A little bit further to go, but I'm going to unpause the video again. We'll fast forward and we'll get to the actual step of verifying the download. Okay, all right, so it looks like everything completed. Now we're going to type ls again. And we should have a file called firefox.exe. And so we have successfully used the PowerShell command to download a executable or program. And this, by the way, this doesn't just work on executables. This is pretty much any file that you want to bring down, you can do so uh, by using this PowerShell command. And there are additional commands that go along with it, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to use the beginner guide. So I hope that you will stick around for the next series because we're getting very close. We're going to actually be digging into the real meat. I'm going to be showing you some vulnerabilities and then I'm going to be showing you the remediation for those vulnerabilities. And these are things that you can actually put on your resume saying that you understand how to do vulnerability management. Very important. But anyway, hope this video was very helpful. Don't forget to, to drop a like on the video. Uh, let, me, let me use some comments, especially if you reached it to end the video, you know, hashtag invoke dash tack web request, you know.